Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rux, I'm a Western Tropical Astrologer and today we're going to be talking about the new moon solar eclipse coming up on the 8th of April. And this is happening at 19 degrees 23 minutes of Aries folks at 6 20 p.m GMT time so you can adjust that for your own time zone. You might be wondering who is likely to feel this eclipse the most? Uh, those of you who have planets or angles in the natal chart around 19 to 20 degrees of cardinal signs and the cardinal signs are Aries Libra and Cancer Capricorn. Now if you have planets or angles around 19 to 20 degrees of the following signs you're going to like this eclipse. Um, 19 to 20 degrees of Leo, of Sagittarius, of Gemini and of Aquarius. Now why you might ask? Because the eclipse is going to form a harmonious aspect with your natal placements. Not all astrological events are felt by everyone. Um, we are going to feel the astrological events that activate our natal chart in general, that activate our natal planetary placements, especially our personal planets, the Sun, the Moon, uh, Mercury, Mars and Venus, and also our angles such as the Ascendant and the Midheaven. If we felt everything, if every single astrological event was reflected in some shape or form in, uh, in our lives, I mean I suppose we would have pretty pretty overwhelming and chaotic lives. So pay attention to your natal chart, uh, pay attention to um, the degrees of your of your planets in, in particular and if you're new here and you're wondering Rux what on earth are you talking about? Where do I get my natal chart? How do I look at the degrees of these planets that you're talking about? It's actually quite easy to get uh, your natal chart. You go online, you google online natal chart generator or you go to websites such as astro.com and astro-seek.com. Uh, these are free uh, online natal chart generators and you basically input your date, time and place of birth and voila you are going to have the map of the sky at the time when you were born. And uh, somewhere either underneath the, um, the natal chart which looks like a circle or uh, on the side, so on the right hand side or on the left hand side you're going to see a list of planets um, and you're also going to see the degrees of your planets and of your ascendant. And you can follow along and you can uh, basically make the most of these general forecasts uh, folks. One very important point. Um, for an accurate birth chart, for an accurate natal chart, you need to know your time of birth. So if you don't know your time of birth, maybe it is worth uh, double checking with, uh, with a parent, maybe even uh, checking your, um, your birth certificate or even calling the hospital. I have had clients who called the hospital and who found out that they were actually born at a at a different time than their parents told them they were uh, they were born at and that of course uh, changes their uh, it, well uh, it is likely to result in a change in what your natal chart looks like. Why is the natal chart so important? Because in astrology uh, the natal chart which is the blueprint of the sky at the time when you were born is said to be a reflection of your soul's intentions in this lifetime. The natal chart uh, shows um, our life stories, themes, lessons, challenges, opportunities, areas of growth, how we can evolve in this lifetime, where we are likely to feel like things are, are going uh, our way more easily, where we're likely to encounter difficulties but also at the same time important, uh, important lessons. The natal chart in astrology is called the root prediction and astrological events such as the one that we are talking about today um, basically activate this root prediction you could uh, you could say. Uh, so certain themes that are already embedded in the natal chart flourish or blossom or become active when they are triggered by various forecasting techniques in astrology um, such as transits which is uh, what we're looking at today. So an eclipse is basically a, a transit, it's uh, in this case a new moon um, because we've got a new moon solar eclipse happening in the sky. So I know this is a very long and geeky and nerdy astrological intro. I hope it, it helps some people. 
<laughs> and for those of you who are not interested in this, you obviously know that uh, I, I have timestamps in my, in my video descriptions and also in the comments section, and you can jump straight to the update for your own zodiac sign. And by the way, I recommend listening to the update for your rising sign. Um, if you don't know your rising sign, then of course, listen to the update for the sun sign. But why the rising sign? Because these general forecasts um, are built with the rising sign in mind. And also please remember that astrology is only archetypally and symbolically predictive. It does not predict concrete material manifestation. So even when I uh, share examples, I give examples as to how the energies are likely to play out. Remember that they are just examples. What is important to take away out of astrological um, readings, forecasts, and so on, is the symbolism and the meaning of what we are talking about. That is how you can make the most of astrology. And remember, astrology is just the language. It doesn't take away. It's the language of the cosmos, of the universe. It helps you understand what on earth is going uh, is going on in this uh, in this world. Um, it does not take away your free will. That is why astrology doesn't predict concrete manifestation, because guess what? We still have free will. We are... I'm like, yep, that's a thing still. Um, we are not passive receivers of life. We are active contributors and co-creators of our life, folks. Now, enough with a long intro. Let me jump into uh, the eclipse. That's why we're all here. Let's talk about the eclipse. So 8th of April, but you're likely also to feel it uh, the week before and the week uh, after. Um, solar eclipse, so new moon uh, in the sign of Aries at 19 degrees, 23 minutes of Aries. Um, this eclipse is happening with the North Node. What does that tell us? Um, it is likely to feel like a, like a fresh chapter that involves some sort of a power surge. So there's kind of like something growing and expanding. So the energy is building up and we're seeing an expansion, right? In whichever sector of your natal chart the, the uh, eclipse is going, to be, uh, is going to be activating. Of course, we're, we're going to talk about that in the um, updates for each of the 12 zodiac signs. So we're seeing some sort of growth, we're seeing expansion, we're seeing increase, and we are seeing a fresh start, we are seeing a new beginning. Um, the eclipse, um, the sun and the moon conjunction are also conjunct Chiron, so we are likely to see a fresh start and a new beginning in terms of how we assert ourselves, how we take action, in terms of how we fight, how we defend ourselves, how we stand up for what is important to us, in terms of how we approach topics connected with autonomy, survival, um, competition, and um, this eclipse puts the spotlight on courage, risk-taking, and doing something for us because it is important for us on an ind for ourselves on an individual level. Um, Aries is the sign of individuality. Aries is very much the pioneer. Um, Aries is independent. It is concerned with survival. It is concerned with new beginnings uh, in general. So this, uh, this eclipse not only uh, does it correspond with a new beginning because it's a solar eclipse, therefore uh, a new moon, um, it also corresponds with the energy of new beginnings because it is happening in the sign of Aries, which which is a cardinal sign. Uh, cardinality is associated with, with, with beginnings and with taking action. The energy of Aries is also concerned with impulse. Um, it is also concerned with desire and passion. Competition, I've mentioned that. So winning, competing, fighting for, for, what, is, uh, for, what, for what is important to us. Um, it is also concerned with bluntness, honesty, directness, and um, speed, I want to say. Um, we may feel ready to kind of like burst forward with significant speed. However, however, however... Um, there are a few caveats to this whole speed uh, aspect of the uh, of the uh, of the eclipse. So, on the one hand, we may feel prepared to start something really quickly in our lives, so we are ready for a fresh start, and we're like, "Okay, come on, all systems go. Let's let's do this. When? Now? No time like the no time like the like the present." On the other hand, 
Um, the eclipse is happening when Mercury is retrograde, so we are likely to see potentially a little bit of a slowdown, maybe because we don't have yet all the information, maybe because we still need to gather data, maybe because we still need to kind of like slow down and revisit some issues from the past, maybe um, reconnect with some people so that we can move forward. Also, the ruler of the eclipse, which is uh, Mars, of course, uh, Mars is in conjunction with Saturn. So we are likely to see a fresh start, but a delayed start. Saturn says not so fast. Saturn kind of like puts the foot on the brakes, whilst Mars is the acceleration. <laughs> Saturn's like, no, 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 no. <sighs> Don't rush. Don't make a mistake. Don't throw yourself into the into the fire just yet. Act cautiously and prudently. So um, Saturn basically kind of like slows down the, the, the new beginning and also makes us aware of the fact that this new beginning is probably something that will affect our lives for the long term. Uh, Saturn makes us aware of long term consequences. So it's probably a good idea to not to rush into anything. We may have significant clarity as to what we want, as to what sort of like fresh start we want for ourselves, what, what we truly desire, what we are motivated and driven and, and what we feel very strongly about. But at the same time, this is not a fresh start to be taken lightly. It is something that will have, again, a long-term impact. Uh, it is something that we are uh, jumping into for the long term. So it's not like you can start something and you can just kind of like discard it after, I don't know, like three months because you're bored of it. No, not at all. On the contrary, whatever you are committing to in terms of new beginnings at the time of this eclipse, uh, my lovelies, it does feel like you're going to have to stick to it. You're going to have to stick with it, uh, let's uh, let's say. For example, let's say some of you decide, you know what, I want to move to a different country. And you're like, I'm going to move to a different country. That's it. I'm going to take this risk because this eclipse is about risk taking. Um, but at the same time, it's like, hold your horses. <laughs> What does that mean? What are the rules that you need to be aware of? What sort of like plan do you need to make? Um, what are some of the concrete, tangible aspects that you need to take care of first and foremost before you can like dart forward and and um, just kind of like move overseas and, and, and turn your life completely upside down? So Saturn kind of like suppresses, delays, contracts, restricts, and brings an energy of prudence and cautiousness to this um, to this new beginning. Um, a new beginning involving a long-term commitment. Um, the Mars-Saturn conjunction is very interesting because it is very, uh, it is very potent at the time of the eclipse. Uh, in general, Mars-Saturn energy is associated with uh, delayed action, cautious action, um, but also fear of action. So we might be uh, a little bit fearful. We might be a little bit scared of, of, this, uh, of this new beginning. We might realize that there is an element of potential danger of, of kind of like throwing ourselves into the fire. Uh, however, uh, Mars-Saturn conjunctions are also... Um, bringing together the will, the willpower, Mars, and uh, the ability to turn things into concrete, tangible results and achievements. Um, Mars Saturn is associated with transforming ambition into uh, concrete achievements over time. Time being the keyword, a Saturnian keyword, right? Um, Mars Saturn is also very representative of the energy of self-control, right? So we are seeing uh, courage, but we are also seeing the ability to control that sort of like impulse. Um, planned action and self-discipline uh, and uh, work that is done alone in an independent manner are also likely to be key themes at the time of this uh, of this eclipse because of the Mars-Saturn conjunction. Now, the Mars-Saturn conjunction is happening in Pisces, so we are very driven and motivated by feelings, by emotions, and potentially also by a feeling of um, maybe loss or suffering. Um, we might be uh, driven by, uh, in a way, our vulnerability. So we might be uh, motivated by our vulnerability. Uh, we might also be driven by ideals. We might be very motivated to start something fresh because it aligns with our ideals. It aligns with a greater vision that we want to bring into the 3D reality. And there's also a feeling of kind of fighting for the underdog, fighting for... Um, and defending victims, defending those that are suffering and saying, okay, enough, 
enough is enough, no more suffering, something needs to be done, the suffering and the pain stops here. Um, Chiron. Chiron is also very interesting. The, the spotlight is being placed at the time of the eclipse on, on wounds, on um, aspects of our life where we felt potentially in the past like we couldn't we couldn't stand up for ourselves, we couldn't defend ourselves. So at the time of this eclipse, we might see at a collective level those who maybe didn't have power in the past to defend themselves standing up and pushing back very likely. Uh, what I am liking is that the Mars-Saturn conjunction is harmoniously aspecting Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. So this new beginning uh, for the long term that involves this like long term commitment and, and patience and determination and courage uh, does seem to lead or, or kind of like promises long term uh, material um, stability and harmony and peace, I'd, I'd say, even if this might not be a peaceful time. I will, I will put it out there. Um, or um, let's say peace is very much, um, how should we call it? Peace is something that we are aspiring towards, but there's not a lot that goes around at the time of this, um, at the time of this eclipse, because the South Node is in, uh, is in Libra, I'd, uh, I'd say. Independent action is also a key theme at the time of the eclipse. Um, at a collective level, we're also likely to feel like the spotlight is being placed on um, armed forces, um, also on um, sports and games, um, also on uh, the world of like movies and, and entertainment, also on um, the healthcare industry, and on um, state institutions, especially state institutions that uh, bring an element of order and control. So kind of like a law and order type of uh, type of uh, type of institutions. Um, you you might know this already, but I'm going to share it anyway. Uh, the path of the eclipse. So where where are we? Uh, where is the eclipse kind of like visible from or where does kind of like the eclipse kind of like cross over the, uh, the, uh, the earth. Um, so the path of the eclipse runs through, uh, Mexico, the United States, uh, Canada, and, um, a partial kind of like eclipse will be visible across, uh, nearly all of North America and a, a sliver, a kind of like small sliver of, of Western Europe. Now, why is this significant? Because at a collective level, it is said that, um, the parts of the world, uh, that, uh, are kind of like in the path of the eclipse are going to feel the eclipse the most. Um, new military leaders uh, are also likely to be a theme at the time of this um, of this solar eclipse. At an individual level, I recommend folks that you have a think about what was going on in your life um, in January this year, January of 2024. Why? Because that is when the transiting North Node was uh, reaching the degree of the eclipse that is happening in April. So we might see a correlation between some of the things that we wanted to start or that uh, required courage of us in, in, in January. We might see a correspondence, we might see a reflection of those kind of like themes and topics at the time of, of, of the eclipse in, uh, in April. I would also recommend maybe having a think about what was going on in your life uh, during the previous um, cycle of eclipses on the uh, Aries Libra axis. So this happened in the past between October 2013 until March 2016 and way before that, April 2004 until March 2006. Uh, that's when we were experiencing once again in the sky um, eclipses on the Aries Libra axis like we are experiencing now. And last but not least, this eclipse is part of the um, 139 Sato series. Uh, Sato series are, are kind of like the, this uh, this way of like grouping um, eclipses. Uh, eclipses that are part of the same Sato series um, share a very similar geometry. So they're kind of like part of a family of eclipses together and their themes are linked. Um, look back 19 years ago when we experienced uh, the, the, the previous um, eclipse that was part of this Sato series, uh, this was happening on the 29th of March 2006 in Aries. So what was going on in your life? Many years ago in 2006, I was trying to think about it. I was 15 at the time 
yeah, it was a very tumultuous, uh, a very tumultuous time. Um, I was actually starting, uh, the eclipse was happening in my house of career, and I was actually about to start, let's say, a new, uh, a new career path. Uh, I, I was about to become a, um, a tennis umpire. I played tennis for most of my life. Um, the view was, I, I mean, the goal was to become a, a professional tennis player. I started playing when I was four and uh, at 15 uh, I, I attended um, a school for, for, for umpires, for referees, and I, I started um, attending uh, tennis tournaments, tennis competitions uh, as a referee. So I basically like started uh, a new career at the, at the time. But yeah, think about what was going on in your life. March, March, April 2006, because you may see a reflection of those themes at the eclipse happening in April of this, um, of this year. And before we jump into the update for each of the 12 zodiac signs, because I know most of you are here for that, I want to remind you that if you want to work with me, you can find me on my website. My website is written in the stars-astrology.com. That is written in the stars-astrology.com. Um, that is the only place on the internet where you can book personal readings, personal astrological consultations with me. Um, if you are a new client, you can go straight to the services section and book the one hour, 15 minute Zoom consultation. If you're an existing client, you can book the year ahead forecast or uh, maybe the 30 minutes follow up consultation if you have some specific questions or one particular area that you want us to dive deeper into. Um, as an astrologer, uh, my focus is uh, on uh, natal, uh, natal astrology, but also on relationship astrology, uh, forecasting, which is why we're here. Um, I also um, I also offer uh, services in the space of um, uh, astrological relocation, so astrocartography and the astrology of relocation for those of you who are looking to move to a different country or to travel to different places so that you can best be prepared for what to expect uh, in those uh, in those places. And I'm also someone who is particularly interested in vocational astrology. So for those of you who want to better understand how to get the most out of your astrology from a career perspective. I'm here, you can reach out. Um, once again, if you're a new client, it doesn't matter which of these services or which of these um, areas you're interested in, the top, the, the service to go for uh, on my website is the one hour, 15 minute Zoom consultation. And in that time, we can address any and all areas of interest that are on your mind. So remember, written in the stars-astrology.com, at the time when I'm filming this, I am taking bookings for the end of April, beginning of May. Generally, the waiting time is around a month to a month and a half, um, just in case you, uh, you were wondering how much you, you, uh, you need to wait. And without further ado, let us dive into the update for the one and only Aries, of course, of course, of course. My dear Aries, 8th of April, uh, active week before week after, uh, there is going to be a solar eclipse happening in your first house of identity, of life direction, of self-development, of the physical body, of how you show up in the world. And um, Mars, the ruler of the eclipse, is going to conjunct Saturn in your 12th house. So what does this mean? This is a fresh start, my dear Aries. A fresh start that might involve a little bit of a delay. So you might you might decide upon this fresh start, or you might feel like life, circumstances, destiny are, are pushing you in the direction of a of a fresh start at the time of this uh, at the time of this eclipse. But you kind of like have to wait maybe until at least Mercury is out of retrograde, or um, until the shadow period is is over. Uh, so the retrograde ends on the twenty fifth of April, um, but the shadow period of Mercury retrograde ends middle of May. You might feel like you have to wait for either of these so that you can fully implement, so that you can fully take action aligned with this new beginning. A new beginning on a personal level, um, Aries, it feels like you're probably deciding to essentially turn into a new person, I, I, wanna, I wanna say. You are cleaning up your life if you ask me, you're probably letting go of uh, ways in which you used to sabotage yourselves. Um, you're probably also maybe deciding to let go of an existing career path, an existing set of goals, an existing community, or or um, an existing position that was tied in with your reputation. So it's a fresh start that involves a release of, uh, of something. It also feels like you're kind of like... <sighs> 
inspired, let's say, or you're bold enough to step into the unknown some uh, somehow. Um, if you are stepping into the unknown, it could be something that you're doing without necessarily revealing to everyone uh, on the uh, on the outside. So it could be a fresh start that you are hiding from others that is happening behind the scenes. And some of you could actually um, begin a new chapter on the career front that again, you are keeping hidden. Um, this eclipse could also bring a new beginning in terms of your status and reputation and position in the world. So for example, let's say some of you decide to maybe, uh, I don't know, take a leap of faith and become parents. Um, and potentially uh, at the time of this, uh, of this eclipse, um, maybe you hear news of pregnancy or um, maybe there's a feeling of like, okay, this is underway. Um, so this is very likely to impact your, your status in the, in the world, your, uh, your position in, um, in the world. You might also decide to invest more energy into your mental health, into your spiritual health and um, in activities that contribute to a stronger sense of relaxation, but also um, that contribute to you getting to know yourselves on a more profound level, uh, Aries. And some of you might just start a new uh, regimen when it comes to your physical body, when it comes to looking after yourselves, and you might decide to cut down on some of the activities that were sabotaging your overall health, wellness, and well-being. Taurus, Taurus suns and Taurus risings. New and solar eclipse in Aries, 8th of April, active week before week after. Um, this is activating your 12th house, uh, my dear Taurians. So this could be a new beginning, once again behind the scenes for, uh, for you. Um, a fresh start that involves courage, that involves action, that involves risk taking, that involves facing your fears. Um, potentially, potentially when it comes to your goals for the future, uh, potentially also when it comes to your, um, your career path. You might also decide to start working maybe on a goal uh, that is important to you behind the scenes. You are likely to work on this um, alone. Um, you might realize that further down the line, you may need to collaborate or, or come together with a group of people, with a community of people who are important in you, uh, important in terms of you accomplishing this, um, this goal. This might also be a time when you join a community of people or you decide that you wanna be part of a community of people uh, who are interested in the same topics that you're interested in, especially from a spiritual perspective, but potentially also maybe from a career perspective. And you might also decide to approach very courageously um, together with the help of others, maybe, uh, something that involves your mental health, such as, um, maybe anxiety or something that's been kind of like weighing very heavily on, on your, uh, on your heart, on your soul, on your, uh, on your mind. Uh, some of you maybe who have been dealing with things like addiction may decide, okay, you know what, this is it. It is time to reset this aspect of my life. And I am committing to maybe joining this program, joining this community, um, becoming part of this organization, uh, formed of people who are dealing with the same type of issues or who have the same goals. And that actually seems to be a very strong contributor to a long-term, uh, a very likely uh, long-term successful result. But remember that this is just the beginning. So the work is not done yet. Take your time. Gemini's, Gemini suns and Gemini risings. 8th of April, active week before week after. Fresh start, exciting, bold, uh, exhilarating, uh, passionate, intense, fresh start when it comes to your uh, goals for the future, but also when it comes to um, the communities, uh, the groups that um, you are a part of, maybe the organizations that you are a part of, especially groups, communities, and organizations that have something to do with your uh, career and uh, with your place in the world, with your status, with your position in, uh, in the world. This is a time to set exciting new goals for the future. This is a time to um, kick off the process of, of going after your long-term goals. And you might realize, you know what, I need to go back and reconnect with some people from the past if I want to make these goals happen. Or I need to reach back out to my, my old friend if I want to make this goal happen. Uh, remember that the eclipse is happening when Mercury is retrograde. So uh, there is a, a certain kind of like energy of, of uh, going back into the past and, and maybe bringing the past back into the present and making it a part of your, uh, of your future. Um, I would also say that uh, this eclipse can bring 
in a way that maybe feels very fated, uh, a new community, a new group of people, a new organization that is likely to have a long-term impact upon your, um, upon your career. And maybe you are not seeing it yet, but wait and see, wait and see, wait and see how this, uh, how this plays, uh, how this plays out. My dear Cancerians, Cancer Suns and Cancer Risings, 8th of April, active week before week after, we've got a new one, solar eclipse in Aries in your house of career. Big, new, beginning, career-wise, my lovely Cancerians. Now, I know some of you are going to say, Rux, I'm not working. What is this going to be about? I'm going to address that also. But uh, for many Cancerians who are uh, involved in, in uh, the professional sphere, this is probably going to open up a new path for you uh, career-wise, either because uh, maybe a new... Um, a new opportunity awaits you either because you realize I want to leave behind an existing career path. I want to leave behind maybe an old position or an old uh, kind of uh, company, sector, industry that I that I uh, used to activate in. In any case, your eye is set on, on new horizons professionally, my, uh, my lovely uh, Cancerians. Um, if you're already taking action on this front, which is very, very likely, um, there might be uh, an element of traveling connected with this new career path uh, involved. So uh, you might decide, for example, to accept a job, to accept a role, to accept a position that involves traveling um, in order to collaborate with, with people from a different office, from abroad. Um, you might also form a new partnership with someone from abroad. Um, and it also feels like at a more symbolic level, uh, this eclipse uh, puts the spotlight on a whole new philosophy and mentality when it comes to your uh, career path and your professional path and how you serve society. Now, those of you who are not involved in the professional side of things, um, maybe you're retired uh, or, or um, you're not interested in career aspects, um, this new moon solar eclipse uh, is still likely to put the spotlight on your public life. So there is a difference, because I know some people are commenting and saying, oh no, I don't care about career, what about me? Um, there is a difference between public life and professional life, but in astrology, they're all covered by the 10th house, just as an FYI, right? So it may feel like you are asked to step up to a new role, a new position in, the, in, in, in your public life. So in terms of how you contribute to society, um, this, could be, uh, this could be the time when your status changes in some, shape or, uh, in some shape or form. So some people maybe who are not parents may become parents now, or um, you might accept a role, a position, um, maybe to, to uh, guide, to mentor, let's say, I don't know, children in your community. It could be an element of, there could be an element of volunteering uh, involved. Um, you might also realize what you no longer want uh, from, your, uh, from your public life. And as a result, decide to maybe give up on certain kind of like roles or positions that you held. As I said, if you were volunteering or something like that, you might say, no, this is not for me. <laughs> I don't care about this any uh, anymore. And, and uh, last but not least, um, this eclipse may also put the spotlight on the mother. Um, in traditional astrology, the mother is associated with the 10th house. For those of you who are uh, astro kind of like geeks and they're thinking, oh no, isn't the mother the 4th house? I'm like, no, 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 no. Traditional astrology, the mother is the 10th house, just as an FYI. Um, this uh, eclipse could also bring a new beginning for your mom, uh, a new beginning that maybe involves leaving something behind and, and closing a chapter in the 3D reality. So for example, maybe retirement or maybe closing a chapter connected with um, legal matters or uh, a chapter connected with um, visas, traveling, foreign residency, and so, uh, and so on. Um, even though you're aware of the uh, fresh start uh, unfolding at the time uh, in your life, Cancerians, at the time of this eclipse, uh, there might be a feeling of having to delay things a little bit because Mercury is retrograde. So things are kind of like fully, 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 fully moving forward. After uh, the Mercury retrograde shadow period is over, or post-retrograde shadow period is over, which is going to be in the middle of May. Now, if you are in a Leo, Leo sun and Leo rising, my lovely Leos, you've got something to celebrate at the time of this uh, new moon solar eclipse. What is there to celebrate? So, a few things, or there are a few possibilities. Um, 8th of April, week before, week after, um, it may feel like you're entering a new chapter when it comes to um, legal matters. 
So if you have been struggling on the legal front, let's say you've been involved in like a trial of some sorts, or maybe you've been involved in uh, a legal matter connected with, with uh, your foreign kind of like residency or green card or visa or something like that, it feels like you're, you've kind of like entered a new chapter, you've got the visa, uh, there's good news. There's a feeling of, of the hardest part of this uh, of this journey being over and now you're ready to kind of like to start fresh. This could also be a fresh start uh, for Leos from an academic perspective. So you might hear news that you've been accepted to a PhD or a master's. Um, there is a, a long term material commitment, I want to say, <laughs> just as an FYI. <laughs> um, but you probably know this already. So I'm just making you aware of the um, of the obvious of a new beginning involving traveling and foreign lands and foreign countries is also very possible. Uh, Leo's uh, you might form a partnership, a business partnership that involves um, traveling abroad in order to to work things out together with this uh, with this person. And last but not least, this new moon solar eclipse seems to shine a light on your belief system. It feels like you are embracing a new life philosophy, a life philosophy that has a very strong impact upon how you address matters connected with money and finances, but also how you address matters connected with uh, partnerships, relationships, as well as your status and position in the world. And you are feeling probably very empowered by this new life philosophy. Virgos, Virgo suns and Virgo risings. New and solar eclipse, 8th of April, active week before week after. Uh, this is happening in your, let's see, in your 8th house, my dear Virgos. Um, have a think about what was going on in your life, uh, Virgos, in January of this year, especially when it comes to um, shared assets, shared resources, such as, I don't know, like a property that you, you, you share together with a partner, um, inheritance, insurance, uh, investments, um, commissions, lump sums of money, and also relationships and partnerships, not just personal, but also business-wise. Have a think about what was going on in these sectors in January of this year, because this new one solar eclipse is likely to bring a fresh start in this direction. Um, generally, this eclipse uh, is likely to bring in a new beginning um, in terms of how you approach shared assets, shared resources, and maybe shared expenses together with a partner. Um, it could be, I repeat, a romantic partner or a business partner. Um, you might uh, kick off a new partnership that involves a financial component. So you might, for example, welcome into your life uh, a new financial advisor or a new accountant or someone in this uh, in, in this kind of like space or sector. Or it could just be a business partner. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone who I don't know, like is in charge of your uh, is in charge of your money. Uh, this eclipse can also bring a fresh start when it comes to your partner's finances for those of you who are in a relationship. So the partner might uh, enjoy maybe um, the fact that maybe they've gotten a raise or, or they're about to get like a better paid job. And now you can afford things that are more expensive as a uh, as a couple. <clears throat> This eclipse can also mean a fresh start when it comes to intimacy. It feels like you might be overcoming some sort of block or fear or um, challenge when it comes to uh, issues of intimacy in your relationship uh, sector. I believe you're no longer afraid uh, for, for, for whatever reason to show your vulnerability, Virgos. And of course, we know that if we want to achieve intimacy, we have to be willing to be vulnerable. So. I salute this eclipse and I salute you, uh, Virgos, for, for having the courage to um, to maybe open up, I'd, uh, I'd say. Libras, Libra suns and Libra risings. 8th of April, active week before week after, new moon solar eclipse in your 7th house of partnerships, relationships, and one-to-one -one connections. So, for those of you who are open to our relationship, this eclipse can bring a fated relationship in your life. It can bring a new partner, long-term partner, or someone who has the possibility to become a long-term partner. Um, it could also feel like you are maybe resetting your, your attitude towards partnerships and relationships in general, and maybe you're willing to put in more effort, more work, more patience over time. Um, this eclipse can also bring a new business collaboration because the ruler of the eclipse is in your sixth house of day-to-day -day work. Um, it can also bring in a fated collaborator uh, or advisor or counselor, uh, the Eclipse, that can help you with health-related matters. And this person may be able to help you achieve um, 
health-related goals that felt potentially unattainable in the past. So someone who is really, 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 really helpful uh, in this direction. Um, this can this eclipse can also bring a fresh start and a new beginning relationship wise or partnership wise that is somehow connected with the past because mercury is retrograde at the time of the uh, of the eclipse so maybe let's say you've been thinking of getting a personal trainer or you've been thinking of signing up for therapy and maybe you talked to someone in the past but you were like ah oh, i don't know is this the right time i'm not so sure and now the eclipse is like come on this is it it's now or never commit to this i do believe you pretty much have to commit for the long term to this to this partnership to this collaboration but it is probably getting you closer to uh accomplishing your goals and maybe to also overcoming some sort of uh fears or or, or uh, areas that generated crisis in the past in in one form or uh or another and for those of you who are in a long-term relationship already um this eclipse can bring a fresh start when it comes to the partner's health uh, if the partner has been having issues health-wise, I feel like they, they're entering a new chapter. They're not out of the woods yet. They might still need to like um, maybe um, spend quite a bit of money in order to um, achieve their health-related goals, but they are well on their way to doing that. And that is very... I mean, that's encouraging, I, 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 wanna, I wanna say. Scorpios, Scorpio suns and Scorpio risings. 8th of April, active uh, week before week after, there's a new moon solar eclipse in your sixth house. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so a few things. Uh, this eclipse can bring a new beginning work-wise, so you might receive a new job offer. Uh, you might start a new job. Uh, there could be a new job offer or a new job opportunity or a new work-related pro project on the horizon, but maybe um, there's kind of like a feeling of a, of a delayed start in some shape or form because Mercury is retrograde at the time of the uh, of the eclipse. So for the, the actual, 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 actual start to happen, it could either be uh, necessary for... Um, the retrograde to be over, which is happening on the 25th of April, or for the post-retrograde shadow period to be over, which is going to happen middle of May. So you might hear news of a new job, or you might hear that your job uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is going to look differently, so you don't necessarily need to move to a new company, for example. It could be that your day-to-day -day is going to look differently. Maybe you're going to work in a new team. Maybe you're moving in into like a new department in the company that you're in already. So you might hear that this is happening at the time of the eclipse, but it might take until end of April or middle of May for this to physically uh, to physically happen. Some of you may start a new health regimen at the time of this uh, of this eclipse, uh, Scorpios. It feels like you are committing to something new health-wise, uh, something new that involves action, movement, uh, and that involves time and patience and being willing to push through uh fears and blockages and a certain kind of like reluctance to to, to make things uh to make things happen uh you could sign up for a new health related activity that you're quite kind of like passionate about so for example for the sake of your health you might sign up t for uh like swimming classes and maybe you already enjoy swimming maybe you already enjoy being in the water so um it feels like there's an element of enjoyment when it comes to whatever it is that you're signing up for um, health-wise at the time of this uh, eclipse. But it does feel like you need to revisit your health, especially in terms of um, movement, action, um, and in terms of how much time you really allocate to, to these aspects of your, um, of your health. Sagittarius, Sagittarius suns and Sagittarius risings. 8th of April, active week before week after, We've got a new moon solar eclipse. <laughs> this is happening in your fifth house. So why am I chuckling? Why, why am I having this attitude? <clears throat> so Sagittarians, uh, for those of you who are open, uh, this new moon solar eclipse can bring a fated uh, romantic partner in your life. Uh, why fated? Because it's an eclipse. Eclipses push us in the direction of our destiny. So something that feels very kind of like fated and predestined might take shape, might uh, might kick off at the time of the uh, of the eclipse. Um, it may feel like someone that you know already, someone from your past, someone maybe who I don't know you've been friends with or you've hung out with or 
they've been on your radar. Um, maybe work with them. Um, it feels like the, the eclipse can bring this person from your past uh, into the, 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 the present moment. And there is a spark. There is a possibility for something romantic to come out of this. Another possibility is that you uh, may kick off a new chapter in your life at the time of the eclipse connected with children. Those of you who are looking to get pregnant, for example, or who are looking to um, expand the family uh, are likely to get good news at the time of this eclipse. Uh, there might also be something that you're committing to uh, if you have kids already. Um, you might be committing to doing something for your children. Um, for example, even if it involves money and spending and efforts on your end, you might commit to, I don't know, sending your kids to... to um, to play a game, to uh, maybe take uh, like classes, uh, to to get involved in activities that they are really really passionate uh, about. Um, you might also kick off a creative project at home, uh, Sagittarius. So, for example, let's say you are looking to uh, redecorate the home. You are looking to kind of like repaint the walls or something like that. This is the perfect 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 time to um, to do so. Um, this can also be the time when you discover a new passion or hobby, or you are likely to go back to something that you're passionate about when you were a kid and you realize, you know what, this is really something that makes me happy. So I'm going to do more of this. Why haven't I been doing more of this up until this, uh, this, uh, this point? I, I should have been, <laughs> let's, uh, let's say. And that is Sagittarius. Now, if you are a Capricorn sun or a Capricorn rising, my lovely Capricorns, new moon solar eclipse, oh God, in your house of home, family, uh, living situation. This is very exciting. Why, uh, why do I believe that this is very exciting, especially for Capricorn risings? Because when we have astrological events happening in the cardinal houses, um, my apologies, in the angular houses, signs are cardinal, houses are angular, um, we are likely to feel them very strongly. Um, it is said that what happens in angular houses has a 100% potency and a 100% strength in terms of manifestation. So what does this mean? Fresh start in terms of home and living situation, family life, uh, property sector. Um, have a think about what was going on in your home life, family life, and living situation, Capricorns, in January of this year, because this new moon solar eclipse is likely to kind of like bring back to your attention themes that were on your radar in, uh, in January. Some of you, some of you could be uh, welcoming in a new family member. So the family might be growing, might be expanding. Um, some of you may um, may help a family member in some shape or form, uh, kick off a new chapter in their in their life. Something that uh, you know they are very serious about. Something that they want to commit to. Uh, it could be something that involves, for example, education. Uh, but they do seem to need your 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 help and your support and your guidance in some in some uh, in some way. Um, this could be a new beginning for a parent that you're kind of like witnessing uh, Capricorns. Maybe a parent is is retiring or maybe a parent is um, moving to a different city, to a different area. And um, you're kind of like helping them go through the motions. You're helping them with the, the concrete aspects of the, of the move. Uh, but it also feels like there is a very kind of like strong emotional component to whatever is, uh, whatever is happening. It feels like the end of an era. Uh, some of you could be moving into a new home altogether, um, whilst at the same time maybe dealing with um, the, the sales aspect or the purchase aspect, so papers, documents, and and uh, and things like that. And last but not least, some of you might also decide to approach your private life very differently and do more of what makes you happy in your private life. So invest more time and energy and resources and efforts into what truly, truly generates a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction in your private lives, um, Capricorns. I'm liking this. I'm, I'm very much liking this, uh, this eclipse. Aquarians, Aquarius suns and Aquarius risings. 8th of April, active week before week after, we've got a solar eclipse happening in your third house. And the ruler of the eclipse is... Um, in Pisces, in your second house of values, income, self worth, and self uh, and self esteem. So, what's going on here? Um, at the time of this eclipse, you might uh, you might decide to speak completely differently and to um, communicate and to verbalize things in a completely different manner when it comes to um, um, 
your financial goals, financial interests, and your your um, your your budget and and the financial sector in general in your uh, in your life. Um, you might start learning more about money at the time of this eclipse. You might, for example, sign up for a course that allows you to better budget, to better um, save, to better invest. For uh, for example, and to make sure that you can achieve long term uh, financial security and stability. Um, you might also invest money in in your education in some uh, in some shape or in some shape or form. Um, this could be the time also when, especially if you've got siblings, a sibling might experience some sort of a fresh start involving their financial situation. So maybe they are getting a job or they're signing up for a course that is going to be useful in their uh, in their professional um, in their professional life. If you've been meaning to buy or to sell something, uh, this eclipse put the, puts a spotlight on buying and selling. Um, especially it may be something that you wanted to buy or sell uh, in the past, in particular around January of this year, it could come back to your attention and it might feel like it's finally happening or things are finally kind of like moving forward in this um, in this direction, even if there were delays in this uh, in this direction. Um, you might also decide to finally speak to someone who you've been meaning to talk to for, for a very, very long time, someone who can have a positive impact in some shape or form on your long-term financial goals. And last but not least, you might start learning more and investing more time, money, energy, and resources into topics that are connected with your physical body and your general health, wellness, and well-being, Aquarians. Um, a new neighbor might come in uh, at the time of this uh, of this eclipse. Uh, there could be changes happening in the neighborhood, and there might also be the well a need to kind of like pay for some of these changes. So so I don't know. Let's say. This is a very random example. Uh, let's say the the kind of like neighborhood committee. <laughs> I don't know if, if something like this exists in your neighborhood, decides that they want to, I don't know, install like security cameras all over the street. And uh, on the one hand, you're excited because you're like, yes, it's going to be safer to walk down the street and uh, I don't need to worry about, I don't know, going out at night. But on the other hand, there is uh, a financial implication uh, coming, <laughs> coming your way i.e. you need to pay for your part. Pisces, Pisces suns and Pisces risings. New moon solar eclipse, 8th of April, week before a week after. New beginning, my dear Pisces, um, when it comes to your income, your financial situation, but also um, expenses, budgeting, um, as well as self-worth and self-esteem, uh, resources, and how your resources are... Um, kind of like directed towards or channeled towards what is important to you on a long term basis. This could be the time when you uh, revisit your budget and you decide to invest more into your health, wellness, well being into what puts you in a great place uh, physically, what makes you feel kind of like really good about your your um, um, health and wellness uh, situation. Um, this could also be the time when you start making money in a new way. Uh, there could be a new source of income on the horizon. You might be getting a raise or you might be earning money in a new way altogether. Uh, a way that is um, very strongly connected with something that you are personally, personally, personally invested, uh, invested in. Um, some of you could also uh, start some sort of a um, community at the time of this, uh, at the time of this eclipse, you might decide to found, to form, uh, to initiate, uh, kind of like to, to set the foundation of a community uh, with a view for this to be a, an income generator in uh, in the future. Um, if you have been thinking of doing something with your money, or if you have been thinking of a new source of income uh, in January of this year, it really feels like these themes are coming back to your attention at the time of this uh, of this eclipse. Um, it feels like the, the eclipse is also putting the spotlight on your self-worth and it feels like you are feeling much prouder of, of who you are and much more um, worthy uh, of all the good things out uh, out there. Uh, so it does feel like a little bit of a reset in terms of your sense of self-worth. Uh, but as a result, because you're probably realizing, you know what, I'm important, I'm great, I'm valuable, uh, you might... Uh, 
you might take a bit of a step back and say, why have I been neglecting myself? Why have I, why have I been neglecting my health? Why have I been neglecting my body? Why have I been neglecting my self-development? So from, from a, a kind of like a really good place when it comes to self-worth, uh, you might decide to invest more in your own um, self-development and in your own kind of like personal empowerment, I'd, uh, I'd say, um, Pisces. Um, whatever you're committing to at the time of this new moon, uh, be it financial, uh, be it connected with self-growth and self-development, be it connected with a community uh, kind of like aspect, remember that it's likely to be uh, something that affects you in the long term. So don't take this lightly. Don't jump without kind of like thinking first or making a plan first or becoming very kind of like fully, fully conscious and aware of the fact that this is a long journey. This will require patience, endurance, uh, stability, hard work over time, my lovely, uh, my lovely Pisces. Um, but all in all, I'm liking this. I am, I am liking this. And if you're having any sort of like conversations around money and finances at the time of this, uh, of this eclipse, they're probably going to turn out really well. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, but remember that you have to be, uh, the one that takes some sort of a risk or the one that kind of like initiates the conversation that kind of like, uh, throws the, that throws the dice and that kind of like shows the way forward because Mars, the ruler of the eclipse is in your first house of, of, of identity and life direction. Let us know, folks, how the eclipse plays out for you. Let us know what it is that you're kicking off at the time of the eclipse. Let us know what fated new beginnings you are experiencing at the time of the eclipse. I know that I might not respond to all the comments, but believe me that I do read all, all of them, every, every single one of them. Um, also remember that if you want to work with me, you can find me on my website, which is written in the stars astrologycom That is the only place on the internet where you can purchase personal consultations, personal astrology readings with, uh, with me. If you're looking for guidance for the year ahead, if you're looking to understand yourselves better, if you're looking um, to understand how you can take advantage of the cosmic energies, how you can live a more aligned life with the cosmos and with your soul's intentions and with the intentions of your higher self, written in the stars astrology.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Rux Unbelievable in one word. And if this content is useful, if you like it, if it's cool, if it's interesting, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button. And you can also leave a donation to my channel using the thanks button underneath the video. Enjoy eclipse season and I will see you next time. Bye.